One of the biggest differences between working at a startup and big company is all things like leveling promotions and figuring out your career trajectory. Being an early employee at a few startups now, I'm currently in Notion, frankly to say in the beginning, it's kind of like the wild, wild west. You get the job, you figure it out. It was really a matter of like, how is the business doing? What are the most pressing business needs? And often that determined your role and your trajectory. And fast forward to now, we have grown a lot and we're in this transition phase of introducing leveling at the company now, which means that there are set levels. This is what each level needs. And to go to the next level, you need to meet ABC criteria. So it's very like crystal clear laid out. And it kind of just made me think about to the like earlier days and how I actually missed that wild, wild west environment. Even with like promotions or like compensations, I actually asked for raises like quite often, almost like twice a year, I would say. And yeah, some of them were successful, some were not. But anytime the scope of my role was increased, I did bring it up. And obviously like I wouldn't be able to do that now. Now we have like yearly cycles and et cetera, et cetera. All that to say, pros and cons. So one thing that's definitely different about a big corporation versus a startup in terms of career development is that the focus is more on you versus the company and you just generally get a lot more support. There's more resources available. So for instance, at Google, there's this thing called a 20% stretch project where you can find roles where you spend 20% of your overall time and see if you might be interested in them. Not only do you have the opportunity to spend some time outside of your day job to try these new roles but there are just so many diverse roles at a company as big as Google that you could pretty much find within those 20% stretch roles something that you're actually interested in or something you might not have even known existed. I recently had a career development talk with my manager and I let her know that getting more direct management experience is really important to me and my career growth. And I was honestly very surprised at how easy it was to share that that was my desire and how it's actually possible to get that type of experience. And so I think that just shows the resourcing and support available make it feasible for you to get that type of experience and growth. Life goes up and it goes down. I know my mom taught me that I figured why we fool around so little so I just had some lunch and I'm also realizing that a lot of backdrops are very dark. I didn't realize that until I started filming. I actually just finished my performance review process which was called Perf. Now we're moving to grad. That's another story. There is basically leveling across Google. At each level, you have very clear responsibilities and objectives that you need to meet. A good performance review would basically be if you are consistently exceeding expectations, that would demonstrate that you're ready for the next level. During my performance review, my manager basically just walked me through what was expected at my level and she also shared what was expected at the next level. We actually listed out all my projects and basically the expectations of each quarter under that project. So under project A, I have Q1 goals, Q2 goals, Q3 goals, and Q4 goals. You can look back in time and see if you're able to hit those goals, maybe you even exceeded them. And I think having that reference point and being able to put metrics behind that really helps you showcase your work. And being able to present that is something that I've really learned across all my jobs. I will say that at a corporate, there tends to be more clear guidelines on what can get you to the next level. I personally appreciate having that type of structure, but obviously at any big corporation, there's just a lot more bureaucracy and HR guidelines that follow every promotion. So there are definitely pros and cons to both. Finally, 
finally finished my peer review self-reflection feedback thing and it took so long. You nominate people that you work closely with in the last six months to give you feedback and your manager can nominate people on your behalf and then also you write a self-reflection. One thing I've really learned in my career so far is the importance of advocating for yourself and the biggest way to do that is being able to speak to your work and to speak to your impact. My first job out of college, I was such like a worker bee and like heads down and like very shy. I thought that like, oh, my work should speak for itself. People will notice. People did not notice, right? They uh, were like, oh, Jenny, what are you doing? And later on, I learned like, oh, I in some way kind of need to be my own PR team where I need to continually speak about what I'm working on, the impact of my work to not only my direct boss, but the team and the company, because that actually shifts like perception and perception matters and it can directly affect your uh, trajectory, your compensation, whatever. All that to say, the good advice I got from my old boss on how to write my self-reflection is she was like, you should organize your answer into three buckets, metrics, projects, and team. Metrics part is tangible numbers, on how you incrementally move the needle for the business. Anything that you can measure, you should write. In terms of like projects, like what were the biggest projects that had significant impact on yourself, your team, etc. And then lastly for team, how did you improve or contribute to the company or team culture? have like 20 minutes before my next meeting. So I also just wanted to share a few tips I picked up when it comes to thinking about your career development and moving up. I would say the first thing is that I always make sure that I'm having FaceTime with my manager. I think that you should always be showcasing your work, not just when it comes time for performance reviews. This is something that I really learned in one of my earlier jobs. Don't expect people to know what you are working on and what you are achieving if you are not the one sharing that with them. Having your manager's involvement in your career makes them also want to advocate for you because they are personally invested in your growth and development. The next thing is to also be thinking about besides your manager, you know, when time comes to talk about your potential promotion or your growth at the company, like who is in that room with your manager? I'm assuming it's usually, you know, your manager, your skip levels, but it's also their colleagues. And you just want to make sure that they are able to say a few good things about you in those meetings. And, you know, those few words go a long way. Lastly, I think moving up, advancing your career, all that is great, but also evaluate, you know, does this all align to your North Star? Are you even happy at the place that you are working? I like to personally jot down emotions that may differ from my everyday emotions at work. So if I'm feeling particularly happy or motivated, unhappy or just frustrated, I like to jot these all down. Eventually, you know, when you look back on six months, you can see if you spent the majority of your time feeling really unhappy, for instance, instead of just as I once did, blindly just trying to like reach the next step, really evaluate if that next step is even right for you. So you need a little break, huh, boy? Say so you need a little space, yeah, boy. Man, it's been a long week, and I'm about to log off soon. But I wanted to quickly mention the importance of like managing up in terms of promotions, leveling, yada yada, all of that. So right now for me, I have a new boss. He joined like two weeks ago. So a lot of like my week was giving him a ton of context and like institutional knowledge. I would say that at startups, there are typically more turnover in terms of management um, because a lot of the time like you get layered and that's pretty normal as a company matures like the need to hire very senior executives like that need grows right now it's like my fourth manager during my like three-year tenure at Notion so far so I had to learn to like adjust very quickly like who is my new boss they are very different from each other everyone has different quirks how they receive information what makes their ears perk up what's their management style some people have user manuals which i find really helpful which is here's like any like fyis about me that you should know about working with me but a lot of things go unsaid as well 
So I try to like pick up on that really quickly and understand like, okay, how can I best work with this person to like navigate that relationship? Because a lot of the times your manager has the most direct impact on your career trajectory at a given company. You know how they say people leave managers, like they don't leave companies. Like I think that's very, very true. I wish it didn't always have to be that way, but it is. I think with the many managers I've had so far in a very like short period of time, I've learned to really ramp up quickly on that and it's proven to become a very necessary skill. I'm gonna log off now. Sunset into the weekend. Bye!